Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. What a momentous occasion. Um, we are pretty excited to have this program for you today and going to keep the greetings pretty short because we have a few of them. Um, I did want to thank again our speakers from last week's session, Exposures of Concern, who set the stage very nicely for today's program. John Odick uh, on the ECOS survey data, Dr. Victoria Arendelle talking about silicosis. Uh, and today we're going to talk about what we can do about it. And of course, Krista Thompson leading out our amazing team of occupational hygienists with the TLV submission work that we do. Um, and John had had got, had that going for years. Kevin Hedges, Masood, uh, Ahmed, um, Shirley Yan, uh, Krista again, of course, Martin Alvinger, Sonia Lau, and uh, Kathy and Denny learning the ropes. So I just wanted to thank uh, our teams for for last week's session. Hope you can check it out in arrears. Um, so a little bit of a different uh, concept today. Uh, the first hour is a launch. We've never done a launch before. Um, so we won't be taking questions for that, but we will have speakers for the second hour with a break in between. And you're welcome to write questions in the chat and, and unmute yourselves uh, at that time. Um, so next slide, please, Shirley. So today we're participating in this meeting, of course, from various locations in Ontario, and I want to acknowledge I'm connecting today from Mississippi Mills, uh, which has been the site of human activity for over 10,000 years and is rich in Indigenous history. Um, this land is the ancestral and unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe Nation, and we're grateful to the Algonquin ancestors who cared for the land and water in order that we might meet here today. As a person who is called Mississippi Mills home, for many years now, I have the privilege of connecting to the land and the river that flows through it most of my life. This photo depicts a recent art installation set along the river called the Seven Gifts, and it pays tribute to the seven grandfather teachings of the Algonquin Anishinaabe. The artistic concept design and creation was based on two-eyed seeing, which brings together Indigenous and non-Indigenous artists and sort of goes with our theme of collaborating to reduce exposures um, in, in, uh, for occupational illness. The origin of the various teachings is unknown, but elders confirm that these teachings were originally framed on actions based on what to do in life. The Anishinaabe philosophy is that through living well, life continues to improve. Again, much to do with our theme for today. The wood carvings on top of the stone carvings uh, by the artist Nishnabe are various local animals that represent each of these gifts or teachings. The turtle, I know you can't see them, but I'll tell you about them. The turtle representing truth, the buffalo representing respect, the raven, honesty, the wolf, humility, the beaver, wisdom, and the bear, courage, and the eagle, love. To end this land acknowledgement, I would welcome and encourage you to reflect on any or all of the seven gifts and how they might impact your work and learnings from today in our efforts together to collaborate to prevent occupational illness. Thanks, Shirley. And Hello. sorry. And now, a few welcome words from our chief prevention officer, Dr. Joel Moody. Hello, everyone. As Ontario's chief prevention officer, I'm pleased to be a part of Ocal's launch of the Silica Control Tool. Launching this tool today showcases the impact that our system can have when it comes together to develop solutions for challenges that workers face every day. The prevention work strategy outlines for Ontario's occupational health and safety system 
will take action to improve workplace health and safety in the province until 2026. Part, part of making the strategy reality is through the collaborative system-wide approach of our steering committees, including the Occupational Illness Prevention Steering Committee. I want to recognize and thank OCAL for their leadership on this steering committee and working in consultation with system partners to make this project happen. The launch of the silica control tool also marks a major step toward addressing some of the findings and recommendations from the Occupational Disease Landscape Review produced by the MAP Center for Urban Health Solutions. The review report was released in October of 2023. The tool will help empower employers and workers from workplaces and operation of all sizes to understand the hazards and prevention strategies related to working with silica. Through initiatives like the silica control tool, we are committed to making Ontario an even safer place to work. So congratulations to the team at OCAL for your hard work and the launch of this much needed tool. Thank you. And uh, our final greeting uh, is from none other than Carmine Tiano, who is the Director of Occupational Services through the Provincial Building and Construction Trades Council of Ontario. Um, Carmine has a, BA, a MA from York University in economics and a diploma in regulatory law and is a graduate of McMaster University's occupational health program. Carmine deals with workplace insurance, safety, and health and is involved in various research bodies. He teaches the Disability Management and Health and Safety Program at Pacific Coast University and presents at various conferences and seminars on occupational health issues. Um, Carmine had a conversation with Shirley Yan, who I'm going, we're going to talk, uh, you're going to see later, that's been really spearheading this from our occupational hygiene team, this project um, and implementing it. Um, and um, you'll hear her ask Carmine a question and hear his response. Thanks, Shirley. Thank you, Carmine, for joining us today. And we will be talking about the new Ontario Civic Control Tool. And uh, Carmine, we've showcased the tool with you. And what was your first impression of the Silica Control Tool? Yeah, my first impression was considering that the Ontario government just recently has announced that there's an initiative to better document workplace exposures, and considering that Silica Although um, it is well known the adverse health effects, um, workers are still getting exposed to exceedingly high limits of silica. I think this is an, a, a great time for the tool to not only come out, to have workplaces understand that there needs to be better controls when it comes to the exposure. So overall, I think um, it is a perfect time that this tool is being released. Moreover, it is a, a time that the workplace partners, unions and workplaces in construction need to ensure that this gets out to the members, the ones that are being affected. Thanks, Shirley. And, and now I would like to introduce my co-presenter and the developer of the tool. I'm going to say her bio and then I'm going to start with the first few slides. Um, so Dr. Melanie Gormaning um, is with the BC Construction Safety Alliance and is a health and exposure scientist with them um, and, and an adjunct professor at UBC School of Population and Public Health. She holds a PhD in occupational and environmental medicine from the University of Aberdeen. She's also a certified industrial hygienist. Um, her research focuses on health hazards and exposure assessment in the construction industry. And of course, like we said, she developed the statistical model that underpins this silica control tool that we're talking about today. So next slide. Um, a quick review, sorry, ne oh, I'm sorry, next slide, yeah. Quick review for folks who weren't here last week. Um, the, we really just, um, we, we want to keep us moving along uh, today and get you seeing the tool and launching it. But we just, you know, wanted to remind us that this is a really common compound uh, in nature um, and that um, it, it does affect workers. But more importantly, um, you know, the vulnerable workers at work sites that they change so rapidly and the companies are moving between sites, between work shifts. And, and the fact that 
the, the most construction employers in Ontario have less than five workers. So they're, they're going to lack the in-house expertise that would maybe be available to and with industrial hygiene staff on site. Um, so 63% of construction employers in Ontario have fewer than that workers. And we all know, um, you know, this tool is, is going to help for those who may not be doing much of anything with this hazard. Next slide, please. So, um, again, you've heard it's a very common construction work site hazard with many of the materials that you see on construction sites. Next slide. And workers are exposed from a, a number of tasks that they do when they, they're processing silica. And again, we, we simplified language here and tried to um, use uh, science communications. Uh, the, the technical terms are res the respirable fraction, and you heard from that big Dr. Victoria Arendelle last week, um, respirable crystalline sil silica specifically, uh, but we're, we've simplified here to, because it's so common um, and in so many work processes that we just want people looking at it and protecting themselves and in the workplaces as much as possible where they wouldn't be able um, so here, these are some of the work activities. Next slide, please. I did want to also mention that the, the silica control tool um, does use a best, is a best practice model. So we all need to protect the health of workers and do better than compliance, especially given the inconsistencies in the exposure limits across the country. Um, and I can show that with the next slide, um, Shirley, please. Um, so, the Ministry of Labor Training and Skills Development is, they had a consultation out on new and revised occupational exposure limits based on the ACGIH. When you heard Krista speak about that last week, um, where we had made submissions to reduce these exposure limits. Um, so, we, we are, the, the government is looking to align the current OELs for silica in the regulation um, with the ACGIH limits. Um, so, the you can see here that most and many of the provinces, especially the one where this tool was created, have a much lower limit with the tool. And we are hoping that um, this tool then, I'm just getting a bit of background noise, Tony, <clears throat> from uh, unmuted folks, I think. Um, and um, yeah, so <laughs> sorry, I keep thinking someone's asking or mentioning, asking a question, so just checking in. Um, so, yep, that is, we are looking to, hopefully this tool influences change further that, that did go out for consult um, and just recognizing that it is a best practice tool, not a compliance tool so that we're protecting the health of workers where we know um, there are health effects as you heard last week. Next slide, please. Um, and many, many health impacts. We're seeing symptoms, um, illnesses, uh, silicosis, pulmonary fibrosis, lung cancer, COPD, um, and the symptoms can range from shortness of breath to body weakness. Next slide. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the journey of how we got here. So you're going to hear from Melanie next on, on what happened before. So the 2017 where, where it was brought into BC um, and how it was developed through the partnership. And I'm going to let her speak to before now. Um, in 2019, we invited the BC Construction Safety Alliance to present to our respiratory hazards working group um, with the Oct Disease Action Plan. And they were right here at the October event. So we thought it was a really great full circle moment to launch the tool at the place where we first heard about it um, together here at October, the October event in, in Ontario. Um, since then, we've worked really hard to get um, the um, Ontario, uh, the Occupational Health and Safety System partners on board to bring it to Ontario. And to do that, we had a pilot program here at OCAO um, in 2021. Um, and then the ODAP, um, yeah, evolved into the Oc Illness Prevention Steering Committee. You heard um, Dr. Joel Moody speak about, and you're going to hear about in the second half of today's session and a little bit more today. Um, and that um, steering committee really narrowed the focus uh, that had been um, uh, in place um, and chose the bringing the silica tool to Ontario as the project um, for this year. And now we're happy to say, here it is. So next slide, I think it goes to Melanie. Thanks, Hi, thank Melanie. you, Kimberly. 
Thanks for that. Um, and, and hello, everybody. Uh, yeah, I've been to Ontario a few times to talk about the tool. And, and, and you know, I've spoken about it to different jurisdictions. And everywhere I go, people people are saying, that's great. How can we use the tool? And, uh, and, and so until now, it's really only been available to workers in BC. So I'm really, really excited that we're, that we're now able to, to make it available to employers and workers in, in Ontario. Um, so I, I, Kimberly gave a little bit of background on on how, how the kind of the story of the tool in Ontario. Uh, so just to kind of back up, like how did we make this tool in the first place? Why did we make it? What what is it for? Um, why does it exist? Um, and what is it? <laughs> so we 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 we've, uh, the, the video gave a bit of an introduction, um, but I'm just going to go a talk a little bit more um, about the tool. So really, the idea behind the tool is to help employers to use existing data on silica exposure levels. So there is, a, you know, people have been doing exposure monitoring for decades to measure the levels of silica associated with different construction activities, different controls different scenarios, and there's a lot of data out there um, that employers could be using in their risk assessment, but it's difficult to access. Um, you know, it, it's it, a lot of it is in scientific journals, in government reports, it's, you know, locked away on people's computers or in filing cabinets. Um, so we wanted to make something to help people to access that data and put it into a format that is easy to understand, where you don't need a master's degree, you don't need to be a CIA to certified industrial hygienist or a registered industrial uh, um, occupational hygienist is just in a format that is easy for people to understand. Um, we wanted to make something that would provide information um, to educate employers and workers about the hazards of silica, about how to control silica, about occupational hygiene best practices, and ultimately we wanted to help people to produce effective exposure control plans. So these are plans that you write up where you know what you're doing, you know what controls you're, do, you're using, you know um, that you're gonna be protecting workers to safe levels. Um, and so we wanna, we wanna give something to help people use a kind of evidence-based um, framework to make effective exposure control plans. We also wanted to reduce the effort and the cost associated with doing that. We, um, you know, it, it's it's very difficult and expensive to do this work. Uh, so it, we want to to make a tool where people can access the information quickly, easily, um, and and make something without spending a lot of money. Um, and to improve the quality of exposure data used in the risk assessment. So um, on to my first point, uh, one of the ideas was to help employers use existing data, but you can't use that data unless you know that it is good quality data. If you're using poor quality data, you're going to get poor results. So, so this is one of the uh, the benefits of the the tool is all of the data that's in the tool is vetted by occupational hygienists, so that we know that it's good quality data collected um, using occupational hygiene best practices and really um, relevant to to the the, the activities at. Um, at hand. Okay, can we go to the next slide, please? So th this is kind of the why of why we developed the tool. Um, it was really in response to some new regulation that was coming into effect in British Columbia. Um, we learned about this new regulation, I think in 2014 or maybe even 2013, it was announced by our regulator here, um, WorkSafe BC. And and what they what they said they were going to do was they were going to implement substance substance specific requirements for respirable crystalline silica, which ultimately ended up being implemented in 2017. Um, and the idea was that uh, employers who have workers who may be exposed to silica above the occupational exposure limit must create a written exposure control plan outlining exactly how they're going to control the silica and providing some evidence that their exposure control plan is going to protect workers um, below the occupational exposure limit. So in British Columbia, we have adopted the ACGIH TLV, which is the, uh, the ACGIH there. Um, an organization who set health-based limits for exposure to hazardous substances. So they, they based on their liter literature review, they determined that 
um, the, uh, most people will, will not have health effects if they are exposed to less than 0 0.025 milligrams per cubic meter over eight hours of exposure for a working life. Um, so we need, so the employers would need to demonstrate that the exposure is kept below uh, 0 0.025 milligrams per cubic meter, which is, uh, it's a challenge because that's a very low, that's a very low level because, which reflects how hazardous silica really is. Uh, and industry was concerned about how they were going to do this because, um, you know, not everybody has access to occupational hygienists. We only have a limited number of occupational hygienists in British Columbia and indeed in Canada. Uh, not everybody had data available. Uh, it was going to be a big job. Um, and so what we, what we noticed was in the proposed regulation, there was a clause that said that monitoring can be based on objective air monitoring data that was collected during equivalent work operations through industry surveys or peer reviewed or scientific studies. So that means that each individual employer, they don't necessarily need to collect their own silica exposure data. If they have access to data from uh, another work site where similar work was being done, they can use that information in their risk assessment. So this was kind of where the idea for the silica control tool came from was to basically make something to connect people with the data and put it in a format that they can use. Um, okay, next slide, please. So we uh, we formed a partnership, um, the BCCSA, uh, which is the organization that I work for. We're a, um, we are a construction industry association, a not-for-profit construction industry association with a mandate to, pro um, to provide tools and resources and services to assist the construction industry in BC with uh, with health and safety standards. Uh, we partnered with uh, the University of British Columbia, the School of Population and Public Health, um, and WorkSafe BC, our local regulator, too, to come up with something that is scientifically valid, that meets the needs of industry, and that also meets the requirements of the local regulation. Okay, next slide, please. So there, there are challenges in the construction industry for, from an occupational hygiene perspective. It is uh, occupational hygiene, uh, the construction industry has historically been, I think, kind of poorly served by um, occupational hygiene for a number of historic reasons. Um, and I think part of it is that it's just difficult to do occupational hygiene in construction because uh, by the nature of the work, it's very dynamic, it changes all the time. And so it's difficult to take measurements and then apply that to what you're gonna be doing in the future because what you're doing yesterday might not be the same as what you're doing tomorrow. Um, the work sites change rapidly. Workers and companies are moving around between sites. Um, even within and between a work shift, the tasks that people are doing vary. Um, and the, there, the industry is made up of many, many small employers. Uh, I think over 90% of the employers in BC have less than 10 employees. And I believe it's a similar situation in Ontario. Um, so because they, they're all small employers, they don't have in-house occupational hygiene expertise. Um, they don't necessarily have in-house occupational um, hygiene measurements that they can draw on. Uh, so it is, um, it's, it's a challenging industry for, for occupational hygiene, uh, which is another reason why we thought they might benefit from some kind of tool, some kind of website, something, some kind of assistance basically with, with occupational hygiene. Okay, next slide, please. So, so what we eventually made was the silica control tool. Uh, with, and in this slide, I'm going to talk a little bit about, about how it actually works. Uh, so we, we, we assembled the database of around 5,000 personal respirable crystalline silica measurements. So each one of these represents a real worker in the construction industry who was set up with a sampling pump and a filter, and we sent their, the, the, their measurement was sent to the lab for analysis. So we um, we know each worker's individual respirable crystalline silica exposure level. And we also know information about what they were doing, what controls they were using. Um, it is important to note that these are not all measurements that we personally collected. A lot of them came from the scientific literature, from government databases, and they're not all from BC. They're not all from Canada. A lot of them are from the United States. Uh, some are from Europe. Some are from Canada, um, and we we have this database, and then we 
when we assembled the database of other measurements, we then went and um, and, and did some sampling of our own to supplement the database to make sure that we do have Canadian data in it, um, and to make sure that 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 we have that we're representing what people are actually doing in the field. So if there are common activities that were not uh, represented in the database, we went out and sampled and supplemented. The, uh, the database. So at the moment, we have about 5,000 personal respirable crystalline silica measurements, and that's growing all the time. So we use this database to generate uh, a statistical model that can predict the uh, workers' exposure level, both with and without uh, engineering controls for different tasks. So, for example, um, we can estimate the exposure for somebody who is drilling concrete, and we can they, they, their exposure will be different if they're indoors or if they're outdoors. Their exposure will be different if they're working um, on a uh, renovation site or if they're working on a new build. Um, and their exposure will be different if they are using uh, some kind of local exhaust ventilation attached to the drill, and it, or if they're not using the local exhaust ventilation. So we can this model based on the data can predict the exposure level for the worker and their scenario and the controls they're using. Um, the tool also compares the exposure level to the occupational exposure limit, and then creates electronic and paper exposure control plans. So it writes out a plan based on what the user inputs into the tool. So they enter all the information about what the worker is doing. The silica control tool creates an estimated exposure level, both with and without controls, and, and, um, and suggests controls that might want to be used. Um, and it also tells people what type of respiratory protection they might need if they're unable to bring the exposure below the exposure limit, and then prints it all out onto a written plan. And as I mentioned before, the tool was launched in 2017. Okay, next slide, please. This is just some data from our users uh, of the tool in BC. So since we launched in 2017, we've been keeping track of who, who's using the tool, how much is getting used, and what. And this is um, these are all the users of the tool in in 2022. I looked at the different company sizes um, by payroll, basically. So. We, um, there are four different categories. There, there are some companies where I don't know how big their payroll is. Um, there are some where they, the payroll is less than $500,000 a year. These are the small employers. There are, there are orange, the gray are medium sized employers, 500,000 to $5 million a year in payroll and large employers over $5 million a year payroll. So, uh, what we see is most of the users are small and medium sized employers, which is kind of what we expected because those are the employers that we think need the most help with um, controlling silica exposure. Okay, next slide, please. And this is the, uh, the use of the tool um, since it was launched. So the tool was launched in 2017. Um, there were 1,011 exposure control plans started in the tool in 2017, and we see every year that has increased. We see more people using the tool or more exposure control plans generated with the tool every year. Um, dipped a little bit in 2020 because, uh, well, for <laughs> because everything kind of got a bit disrupted in 2020, but it picked right back up again in 2021 and 2022, um, saw the most use of the tool of any year. And I have not seen the 2023 data yet, but I, I am, I, I'm sure it probably the trend is continuing of more and more people using it every year. Okay, next slide. Uh, so within the tool, we have, I think, we have over 50 different work activities that you can select in the in the silica control tool. Um, the most common uh, activities that people have been using, um, or that people that people did use in 2022, are listed on in this slide. So the most common is drilling concrete with an electric hammer drill. That's a really common task in construction. Uh, 767 exposure control plans were generated in BC for that activity last year. Uh, other common tasks are chipping concrete, cutting concrete with a saw, mixing and pouring cementitious material, coring concrete with a coring machine, breaking concrete with a jackhammer, grinding concrete with a surface grinder, sweeping, uh, mechanized moving of small rocks, 
grinding concrete with an angle grinder. So I, I show this just to give um, an example of some of the types of activities that that can be um, that can that can be selected in the tool, and these are the most common ones. Okay, next uh, next slide, please. This is a summary of, of, of some of the, I went and looked at all the user feedback that we've gotten over the past few years from users about the tool. Um, and this is kind of a summary of what people said. People say, you know, they think it's an excellent resource. It's saving them time. It's speeding up the documenting process. I mean, I, I'm sure as this is the case in Ontario too, there is a lot of documentation that you need to do for all of your safety and health plans. Uh, and this speeds it up for people. Um, it, people are reporting that it's user friendly. It's useful for teaching and training, which is nice to hear because that was one of the hopes that we had is that it would, it would be a useful resource uh, for training workers. Um, and the other bit of feedback is please add more activities and more control. So the tool is, because it is based on data, we are limited by what data we have in the tool. So we can only estimate exposure for activities where we have data, and we can only estimate the effect of controls if we have data on the use of that control. So one of the one of the main pieces of feedback that we get from people is that they want more activities and more controls, and we are working on that. We are adding more data all the time, and we also um, we're excited to make it available in Ontario because we are we're hoping that we will now be able to get more Ontario uh, employers submitting data to to supplement our our tool and make more activities and controls available. Okay, next slide, please. So um, this just puts the, this into the a global context of, of the, the tool and, and where it sits in the world of occupational hygiene. Uh, so statistical exposure models have been used in risk assessment in Europe for over a decade. Um, there are a number of tools that are based on data. There's, um, there's the um, at, uh, ART, which is the advanced reach tool, which estimates exposure for a lot of different chemicals, um, and there's Stop and Manager, which is another tool. So the, uh, this is kind of um, a continuation of, of work that's been going on in Europe for a long time. This is this is the first one that's been widely adopted in Canada, um, and I'm excited about that. Also, none of the European tools, to my knowledge, estimate exposure to silica, so um, so that it's kind of exciting to be pioneering that as well. Um, the, it really, the, the the idea behind this is it enables users to conduct data-driven risk assessment. Um, so we're trying to mobilize data to to help employers and to help protect workers. Um, and since the silica control tool has, was launched in 2017, uh, the BCCSA has been contacted by health and safety organizations in the United States, in Australia, in the United Kingdom, in different jurisdictions in the European Union. Um, people are, around the world are, are interested in this tool and in, uh, in making it available um, to uh, further um, constituents. Um, uh, but the exciting thing is that Ontario is the very first jurisdiction outside BC to formally adopt the silica control tool. So this is a, this is a big day for us. Um, okay, next slide, please. Um, and the future, the future of, of the tool and this approach. So I, I think one of the real strengths of this approach is that it enables data to be used beyond a one-time compliance measurement. So often in occupational hygiene, people, you know, they collect exposure measurements for um, to, to create a plan or to satisfy a regulator or just to get information. And then the data gets filed and really never used again in, in this. In the silica control tool, the data can kind of have a, uh, it can live on in a way and, 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 and enter this database and be used to help people going forward. Um, the model and the tool are updated as new data become available. So the tool is, um, it's, it's, it's not static. It, it, can, um, it, it can adapt to new technologies, new, uh, new work activities. Uh, we're doing continuing research to support uh, ongoing development and ongoing data collection to update the database. Uh, we have developed a Bayesian version of the model, which is kind of a, a more advanced statistical uh, um, technique that, uh, that allows a little bit fun more functionality in the tool than what's available right now. I'm not going to talk about that in detail, but that is something that, that, we've, been, that we've been working on on the science side. Um, and we are also looking to um, 
to expand this approach to different industries and different exposures. So we have been working with our local mining regulator here in BC to develop a silica control tool version for surface mining. Um, and I'm also working with um, Dr. Victoria Arundel at the University of Toronto and Dr. Hugh Davies at the University of British Columbia to put together a database of welding field exposures to see if we can make a model uh, for, for welding fumes as well. Okay, next slide. And I'm going to pass it back to, to the OCAL folks. Sure. And, and Melly, just as you do that, and, and Shirley, just before we get you going to uh, show folks the tool, um, with a couple of comments, I'll address some of the um, comments in the, the chat. So, yes, we, we would all love to see this tool um, that uh, Melanie and team have worked so hard on that we have translated um, and worked very hard on to make um, uh, usable um, in, in this province. Um, and it took us three years to get uh, to here and the hope is um, Nova Scotia has um, also been looking at the tool. I think someone might be joining us from here today, Alberta, Manitoba, um, uh, CCOHS has partnered with us um, as you'll see through our Prevent Off Disease website um, because we'd love to support this going national and then to your commentary international. Um, it, it's just someone has to pay for it um, and get it open access. Um, but uh, our, our, that is our baby steps to the, the larger goal to getting it where, where it needs to be. Um, and um, the other commentary was is another good one, the data. Um, so the uh, silica, the granite countertops um, data is, uh, the the methodology is embedded in the tool for that work, um, but Melanie is looking for more data uh, in order for that to be in in full function. So we're hoping that this project over a few years will help get help us get more data uh, to make uh, an immediate um, immediate aid in that area through the tool. Um, so thanks for those great questions and. Um, Shirley, maybe I'll hand it over to you now. We weren't going to do questions for the launch, but we're doing great for time. So uh, why don't, um, oh, and I see a question from uh, Nathan. It's just the software um, for the tool with the WSIB account number, but uh, we will hook you up. Um, if you don't know that, there's two buttons you'll see momentarily, and maybe Shirley will answer your question for, for you when she shows the tool. Thanks, Shirley. Hey, Rob, thank you. I'm going to just showcase the tool just give me a minute okay so as kimberly has mentioned the tool you can access it through the prevent knock busy website over here is so you once you press learn more you'll be able to go to the landing page on the OCA website and it provides you with the detail of what the tool um basically encompasses and and here was where Kimberly was mentioning about the two um two buttons so there's two ways to access it it is for construction workers so the WSB number are embedded in the tool and this is where the construction workers um, can go into the tool and create account by using their here I'll show you by using your email, your company name, and your WSB account number. Understanding that can be a little challenging or can have uh if there's something that we can assist on. So if you um if you do not have access to a WSB account number, then you can submit a form through this button here on the landing page. And um, there will be a section where you have to um, provide some information and just know that the submission may take up to 10 business data process just because um, the database is hosted by DC CSA. So there is some processing time, lead time in that. Okay. But going back to the tool, just want to showcase you flow if you have a WSB number and you work in the construction industry, you'll be able to create an account and um, uh, and use the tool. And once you open, uh, there will be a first use survey where it's just a quick 10, uh, 11 questions 
basically on letting us know what is your knowledge on Silica and um, just to capture that uh, knowledge for, for the first time users. And this is what the, the dashboard looks like. And here I'm um, already created work activity, so I will showcase that for you. Okay. okay. So as Melanie has mentioned, in the school there's a lot of resources. So if you want to know more about what Respiratory Crystalline Silica does, is there's a hyperlink which takes you to some uh, great resources from works at BC and also OCAL. So you have both the BC information as well, also down here information in terms of what silica is. And in terms of the exposure health risk, you also can link here and there's a video from a works at BC as well as a lot of information on uh, what kind of health effects are associated with silica exposure as well as some um, studies. So, so this tool is not just for estimating exposure level, it's also a great, a great one shop stop for all those re wonderful resources. So it is a step-by-step -step, um, tool to take you through what kind, what is the employer uh, details, what is the job site sector, so are you in uh, like civil engineering road work or you're in industrial institutional or commercial or residential. So you can uh, modify the, the tool to fit your needs. In this case, I'm going just to choose for civil engineering road work and construction uh, project type there's three. So new construction or renovation or demolition. So for this demo, I'm just gonna put in renovation. And then you can put in more information in terms of job site detail. This is because we understand in some um, some employers they have multiple job sites. So then you can differentiate um, between job site when you create the uh, exposure control plan. Okay. And in terms of work work activity, there are all these work activity that's embedded in the tool already. So. Uh, you will be able to choose. So for the demo, I will choose the concrete and breaking with jackhammer because that was one of the top 10 activity that Melanie has shown. And the tool is a jackhammer. Uh, one part on this page that I would like to uh, showcase is the, if if you find that there are work active activity in your workplace that's not in here. Um, there is a button where you can add in more. So there's the request to add what material you like to add, task, the tool you like to add, and the detail of the work activity that you like to get more information on. And that also um, feeds back to us to do more research and to, to add in more data into the tool. So for this scenario, let's go to the next stage. So. And then the next one is you can choose the work uh, area is outside or inside, or is a restricted area and uh, the duration. So it is less than four hours. Is it 48 hours more than eight hours? So in this case, these are the parameters I'm going to set. And the tool takes all that parameters and it is able to estimate exposure level. So here, the estimate exposure level for silica in this case is 0.262 milligram per cubic meters. And that is with no control. And it shows that based on the exposure limit that we set as the best practice tool, it exceeds the exposure level by 524%. So that shows that is a, a clear, you know, you don't have to do math. It's an easy tool to, uh, to see these numbers without you going in and have to um, uh, do all the, you know, the mathematical background. And also it shows in, according to the action level, it exceeds by 1,048%. And remember the, um, the action level 0 0.025 milligram per cubic meter. This is the level that is recommended by the ACGIH based on the health effects. So um, this is a level that it's, um, that we have to be less, th less than this level to 
to ensure workers will not develop uh, adverse health effects after eight hours of work day for their uh, work career. So the next part of this tool, it, it goes through the hierarchy of controls. So you're able to put in the, the type of control that you have in the workplaces and also the type of control. If you don't know, this will, this will actually help you to navigate uh, what kind of uh, controls that you could uh, implement in your workplace. So usually you have to do the job, so elimination or substitution is, um, is not a choice, but in here, for under engineering control, so there are two engineering control tool that is available for this process. And so for the wedding integrated tool, this is the one that I would choose for the demo. And if, if you'd want to know more about what this entails, there's the detail button and tells you what is the, pro what is the criteria, what is the proper practice, and then additional information on this engineering control. And the next one, next step is the administrative control. So you go through all this criteria to see, well, oh, sorry, go through all these uh, options to see what kind of administrative control that you could implement in your workplace or what you have already implemented in your workplace. So in this demo, I'm going to click yes for inspection and maintenance, but no housekeeping. Hi, hi, uh, yes for hygiene and yes for silica safety instruction and training and yes for exposure emergency preparedness but no for work shift scheduling and no barrier as well as enclosure with all those control put into the tool the tool is able to recalculate the estimated uh, exposure level for silica and here is the output with the control that we just put in for this work task. So with um, the engineering control, the administrative controls, uh, the uh, estimated exposure level with control is 0 0.04 milligram per cubic meter, and that is below the exposure limit. And it shows that it has it, it reduced basically the control impact on the dust is it reduced the dust by 85 percent. So you is um, it is at an acceptable exposure level to perform for this work task with the control embedded. The, of course, the last part of the hierarchy of control is the PPE, and it also provides it in this case because the control uh, previously, the administrative and engineering control were good enough to reduce the, the, the exposure. There's no um, no required protection factor in terms of uh, respirators. However, in other cases, it will show that you need a um, protection factor of, of 10. So it tells you what kind of respirator you need uh, when you, so you don't need to do extra research in this field. And um, it also provides you with oh, uh, where you work Workers in the work area have respirator available. I put yes in here. And do they have washable or disposable coverall? Usually no, I say no. And at the end, this is where we, you will produce the exposure control um, plan. In, in terms of, you will see what the summary looks like. And at the end, at the end, it will provide you with um, a download link to to save it as a PDF on your on your computer. So I hope that demonstration is good for and at, and all these are saved on your dashboard. So once you have your account, all these will be saved. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Shirley. Awesome. Um, we'll just move to our next slide and uh, do. Uh, tell you what a great team was involved in all this and you're going to hear more about the off illness prevention steering committee um, our team here at ocal uh, krista thompson and danny chow first started working on the website and infographics with regard to silica um, and then shirley joined the team uh, to help implement um, bringing the tool to ontario um, and also megan friesen 
Uh, we had Colleen supporting and also Michael Roche and Shaw from a financial standpoint. Um, and it's been pretty tireless uh, with many more. I'm sure I don't want to forget names um, from the BC Construction Safety Alliance. We have Amar and Sarah Knight, as well as Melanie and um, and Mike McKenna, who is going to join us today. And we hope to hear from again. We are just running out of time, folks. The CCOHS, a great uh, partner with Janet Manella at our table. Um, Linda Brown giving us an opportunity to promote the tool at the um, Health and Safety Forum for CCOHS, Karen Cassidy, uh, the Infrastructure Health and Safety Association. Um, I am now going to Dean Dunn before he retired, was tireless in helping us partner. Um, and now Jennifer McKenzie, who's with us to say a few words, and Jasmine. Kelsey, who's been helping Shirley, uh, and you'll be seeing a lot from the Infrastructure Health and Safety Association. And Jen, um, can you join us to say hello? Good afternoon. Thanks, Kim. <laughs> um, so uh, again, thank you again to everyone who has worked tirelessly on this tool uh, for their commitment to safeguarding the well-being of construction workers in Ontario. Um, I find that the Ontario Silicon Control Tool is more than just a tool. It's a testament to our collective dedication to the betterment of the construction sector. But our journey doesn't end here. It's imperative that every construction worker, supervisor, and employer in Ontario becomes not only aware of the tool, but also embraces the use of the tool. As we know, silica exposure has long been a concern in the industry, and this tool represents a significant leap forward in mitigating those associated risks. So IHSA's marketing team and subject matter experts have been working diligently on creating webinars, podcasts, frequently asked questions, and a social media campaign. In addition, IHSA will be raising awareness about the tool with employers, workers, and industry leaders alike through our labor management network, IHSA's training programs, and our consulting services. And once again, I'd like to thank everybody who's been involved in bringing this tool to Ontario. Thanks so much, Jennifer, and again to Jasmine for all her hard work, and she's going to be continuing on with Shirley. Um, um, and the bigger group, um, I definitely wanted to shout out to Wagish Yajavan um, from the Auk Illness Prevention Steering Committee as the co-chair, um, Dr. Victoria Arendale and Dr. Lynn Holness, who helped with the survey um, and the you know impact questions um, as we go forward with evaluating bringing to Ontario. Um, and um, I did want to just check and see if uh, Michael is with us. Um, and um, and again, mention this is for 150,000 construction uh, companies in Ontario, many, many of which were likely doing nothing to prevent silica exposure. Um, and uh, we're very, very excited to have it come our way. Michael, are you here? I am. Oh, great. I'd like to uh, now introduce our, our CEO, uh, Michael Roche who, Roche, who wasn't sure he was going to make it. So um, now to hand over to him. And, and Michael, I wondered if you would, um, I forgot one thing. So just as when Michael finishes up, if everyone who I've mentioned and anyone else who ever worked on bringing the silica tools to Ontario, before you cut the ribbon, Michael could come on the camera, I think would be fabulous. That's great. Thanks, Kimberly. Um, I, um, I'm bringing a message from our Minister Pacini, our Minister of Labor, Immigration, Training and Skills Development. He was not able to be here today, but has sent us a letter of support, which I'm going to read out on his behalf. And um, it begins, um, it's, it's, it's addressed to OCAO. I want to thank you and your team, Occupational Health Clinics for Ontario Workers, for your hard work to prevent workplace injury and illness. Health and safety of Ontario workers is our government's number one priority. Under the leadership of Premier Ford, we're on a mission to make sure that every worker comes home safely to their friends and families after the end of their shift. A central part of this effort rests in how our government is working with our health and safety partners like OCAL to prevent workplace illnesses and support those affected by them. The work that you and your team do in launching the safety control tool is an essential part of the puzzle working together with industry and health and safety experts to develop new technologies that will help keep Ontario's workers safe for generations to come. By helping monitor silicon exposure in mining construction, we can strengthen two industries that are critical to Ontario's economy. And the more we know about the hazards workers face, the more we can do to reduce and eliminate those risks in other sectors. Once again, thank you to you 
everyone at OCAO, and all those attending your webinar for the work you do to help keep Ontario's workplaces among the safest in the world. Sincerely, David Pacini, Minister of Labour, Immigration, Training and Skill Development. Um, so, you know, we'd like to, to thank Mr. Pacini for the letter of support he's written for this program, uh, as well as the support he's given to OCAO. Um, interestingly, it was uh, the day of his announcement, the late call in the evening, and uh, and the, the minister in starting his role in that first day, he phoned uh, phoned me at OCAO, left a message knowing OCAO is an important partner in health and safety, and that he was looking forward to working with us. I uh, thought he was extremely dedicated to be on his first day, you know, putting in the big long extra hours, just reaching out to stakeholders. Uh, he's been extremely active as a minister, both in promoting jobs and promoting a safe working environment for workers in the province. And we look forward to working with him and supporting the prevention work strategy at the ministry. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge uh, the hard work of Kimberly O'Connell and before Valerie Wolf and bringing this tool to the province. Uh, the team that she's assembled, many of the people that we've heard today, uh, promote and implement the tool. And to our CPO, Dr. Moody and his staff for providing strategic direction, for the occupational illness program, as well as support for the next five years to really embed this tool into the work practices that have exposure to silica and provide the frontline tool to all the works of the province. And, and you know, Jennifer McKenzie noted that it's a journey that we're all on here. And um, and and the many players and and um, people that have been involved and um, acknowledging the uh, very early or origins of of bring it forward and our and our wonderful partnership with BC Construction. And so Kimberly, you're noting, uh, I guess we're at the symbolic cut the ribbon point to officially launch the program. Sure. So join us, join us on screen, anyone who helped out or supported um, the tool coming to Ontario, named or not, please join us and cut our ribbon together. <laughs> I wasn't actually sure if that thing was going to move or where. I didn't know. I, either, I just so. saw the slide, but uh, we know, look forward yeah. <laughs> to the next the next five years. This journey, uh, yeah. with this initiative, and we're hopefully, um, it's really hopeful at the end of this period. You know that we can look back and think, "Wow, this was a tremendous success." And so, the people that we have that are on screen right now, thank you, and um, we look forward to all of us working together to achieve the goals of this um, objective and uh, truly make the best efforts on this journey. Thank you. All right, it looks like the next slide, some clapping. Uh, that's awesome, thanks. Um, uh, next, we have just some important closing thoughts from our former OCAO board member, the current director of occupational services through the Provincial Building Trades, Building and Construction Trades Council of Ontario, uh, Mr. Carmine Tiano. How do you envision a tool will help the workers in the construction industry specifically? Well, like I said, I mean, considering that for the last 50 years, we've known how deadly um, uh, substance silica is and its widespread use in construction. Once the tool is out, it's going to be imperative that the unions and the various partners in the system, not only OCAL, the IHSA, the Workers' Health and Safety Center, the OCRC, the Occupational Cancer Research Center, the Ministry of Labor uh, um, Inspection, the Prevention Office. Synergistically, at the same time, they need to be communicating this. What we're going to be doing at the Building Trades, as soon as the tool is launched, uh, I just wrote a memo for it to be a mass uh, communications to our local affiliates via email, via other electronic uh, social media that this tool is, is used. The only way the tool will be effective if people use it. Well, thanks. I can't think of a, a better way to uh, end our launch today and we will take a nice stretch break and come back for the second half of our program today with um, some other news from our uh, the Occupational Illness Prevention Steering Committee and the focus on Ontario around oculus prevention.